This week on Maker Update, a cheap DIY spy camera, manufacturing with voodoo, the Billy Bass Alexa gets fully realized, an internet valentine, printed pangolins, a guitar stomp box development rig, friction welding plastic, and Maker Faire Kuwait. It's Wednesday, February 8th. I'm Donald Bell, and welcome to another Maker Update. Uh, it's raining outside, which is not that fun, but it's actually been nice to force myself to finish some projects that I've got around the house, including a uh, WD Labs Raspberry Pi project that I'm working the kinks out on right now, but hopefully we'll be ready to show you guys soon. Um, but we've got a lot of great stuff packed into this episode, so let's get on with it. I will show you guys the project of the week. Check out this tiny portable time-lapse camera created by Noah and Pedro Ruiz at Adafruit. The project uses a mini spy camera module an Arduino-based Trinket microcontroller, a rechargeable battery pack, a battery backpack board for recharging, and a switch. Altogether, it's around $30 in components. And because it's the Ruiz brothers, there's a 3D printed case for this that fits everything perfectly. They even have a whole separate video just about how they designed the case and it's filled with great advice on 3D design. That said, don't let a lack of a 3D printer keep you from making this project. There's no reason you couldn't prototype this in a cardboard box or even carve out a slice of two x four. I love this project on so many levels. It's cheap, it, there's a great payoff, it's easy to explain to people what it is, the Arduino code is easy to grasp, and it's a great project for kids and teens. I mean, who doesn't want a spy camera? But what really blows me away is how well the Ruiz brothers have documented their project. The steps are clear, the photos are immaculate, and the video is, for me right now, the gold standard for what a practical and entertaining how-to video should be. I will link to it here, and I will totally forgive you for leaving this video right now to go check it out. Just please come back. And now for news. Two weeks back, I missed this story on a Brooklyn-based company called Voodoo Manufacturing that started by three former MakerBot employees. TechCrunch reports that Voodoo just raised $1.4 million and I feel like that's a good thing for all of us because as I'm learning about the company, Voodoo is trying to make mass manufacturing more accessible to makers. Usually after prototyping one design and 3D printing it, you then have to turn to overseas injection molding to make thousands of the same thing. So as an alternative, what Voodoo seems to be doing is they have a warehouse of 160 3D printers that are clustered and running in sync to churn out large volumes of a single 3D printed design. It's a cool idea, and I know it may not be new to some of you. It looks like Voodoo's been around for a few years now, but it was new to me, and I was excited to share it with you guys and excited to see that they've got some money to play around with now to help expand their business. Side note, they're also running a campaign right now where for a flat $5, they will print and ship you a keychain that proudly proclaims your family's country of origin. They're making these at cost and donating $1.75 from each one to the ACLU. I'm sure half of you will say I'm being political by mentioning this, and half of you will say that I should just give the ACLU the whole $5. Honestly, selfishly, I mostly just wanted to see what it's like to order a custom 3D printed keychain from Voodoo. So do what you want. Links are in the show notes. And now for more projects. Last week, I got an email from Mary DeGrazia, a cybersecurity professional who fully realized my dream of an all-in-one Raspberry Pi-based Alexa Billy Bass. Mary has the full build guide on her site, anotherpieblog.blogspot.com. She uses a Pi, an Adafruit motor hat, a small microphone, and an amplifier. The original Billy Bass speaker is repurposed for Alexa to talk through. A Python script running on the Pi manages all the settings for adjusting audio sensitivity and motor response. It's great. And Mary, as promised, you are my Maker Hero of the Week, and I've got some Maker Project Lab stickers heading your way. I also have to give crazy respect to this internet valentine by maker extraordinaire, Becky Stern. With this project, two love-struck geeks can express their affection across any distance using the power of the internet. A press of the button will illuminate and buzz a handcrafted paper heart on your end and relay instructions to light and buzz your valentines on their end. It uses an ESP8266 chip to handle the Wi-Fi and the if this then that web service. This project is a fun mix of electronics and crafting. It's also an adorably romantic nerdy maker gift. As always, Becky's instructions are impeccable and approachable even for beginners. The photos are gorgeous and I could just watch Becky's videos all day. They're that good. 
And finally, check out this amazing 3D printed design for a jointed pangolin toy by Mao Chan. The design was created and posted to Thingiverse to bring awareness to the critical endangerment of pangolins, which I've learned are the only known mammal on Earth to have scales. It's an entirely preventable extinction and a good cause, and it looks like a fun 3D print. Now for a quick rundown of a few tools and tips I found this week. On Hackaday, I learned about this Macrofab Guitar Effects Development Board. If you're into building guitar pedals or really any kind of synth modules or audio effects, this prototyping board gives you a dedicated adjustable power supply section, a true bypass stomp box switch, a handful of common potentiometers, and two breadboards to design on. The whole thing also has a metal enclosure so that you can use it like a giant stomp box. The board goes for $150 on crowd supply and ships in April. On Makezine, I saw this tip recirculate from 2015 from Gareth Branwin on how to use a Dremel type rotary tool to friction weld plastic together. You're basically shoving a rod of plastic into the chuck, spinning it, and pushing it into the plastic that you mean to weld until the friction liquefies the plastic rod. It looks like a useful way to repair 3D prints or prototype with plastic, though I suspect it's a stinky process. Maker Fairs! This weekend we have just one Maker Fair, but it's exciting. It's the first ever Maker Fair in Kuwait. The fair runs Thursday through Saturday at the Kuwait International Fairgrounds. And how cool is that? And it's just another reminder that the Maker Movement is everywhere. And that's it for this week's Maker Update. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe on YouTube. Just hit that button and you're going to be able to catch each week's episode as it comes out. It's that easy. And if you appreciate the time and effort I put into these, nothing would make me happier than you sharing this video onto the internet somewhere. Or giving me a thumbs up or leaving me a comment. Just somehow letting me know that I'm getting through here. Alright? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.